Welcome to our session um, on whether or not the future is decentralized. My name is Brett McDowell. I'm the executive director of Hedera Hashgraph, uh, which is a uh, public distributed ledger um, uh, in the decentralized public ledger space. Uh, some of you might be familiar with my experience at FIDO Alliance, given this is FIDO Alliance's first public conference. Um, where I was the executive director and helped put things together. And I'm very proud of the work that the Fight Alliance has done, um, bringing cryptographic authentication to the market. I'm joined today by three excellent guests that are going to tackle this question about the future and decentralization. Uh, we have Alex Simons, Corporate Vice President of Identity Program Management at Microsoft, Matt Sakamura, Chairman of the OpenID Foundation and wears many hats, in the uh, R&D industry around identity and access management, and Ramesh Kusanapali, CEO of Digital Trust Networks, and also co-founder uh, of FIDO Alliance, and now co-founder of the DID Alliance. Um, I'm gonna ask each of our panelists to introduce themselves a little bit more um, and, and give us their answer to get things started. Is the future decentralized? And what aspect of that question do they want to tackle? Just to tee up our panelists, I'm going to frame it a little bit for them. So we have FIDO authentication, which is obviously cryptographic authentication uh, being used for stronger and more convenient user authentication. This is happening in the kind of traditional client user space, the, the dot-com marketplace and enterprise applications. Um, and then we have the rise of decentralized uh, cryptographic uh, authentication and identity management happening on ledgers with decentralized identifiers, verifiable credentials, all the standardization happening around decentralized identity. And the question is the future decentralized and what does that mean for FIDO authentication standards and the other standards we see coming out of W3C and Decentralized Identity Foundation and other groups? Um, are these technologies coming together? Are they potentially building blocks to produce a greater whole? Or are they competitive or something that deployers have to choose between? Uh, are we at risk of them kind of slowing each other's adoption? So with that, let me start by turning it over to Alex Simons, say more about himself and his take on this question. Alex? Hey, thanks, Brett. Uh, Look, my perspective on this is pretty straightforward. Uh, after years and years of working with enterprise customers and consumers, uh, in fact, you know, over every day, over a billion different people use our services using our digital identities. Um, I think the two are highly complementary. Uh, I think the decentralized identity world with uh, with verified claims is a very exciting uh, capability. I think we're going to see a lot of use there, particularly starting out in some high sensitivity, high sensitivity areas, like for instance, banking, citizen IDs and things like that. Uh, and at the same time, we're seeing tremendous momentum in the FIDO2 authentication space. All the major platforms now support it. I feel like the two of them are super complementary. The FIDO work makes it really easy for me to prove I am the same person who was here last time. That is a basic capability in establishing that unique identifier. And then I think of kind of DIDs and verified credentials as being like almost like super claims. In the world of identity, we have all these claims that tell you different things about the identity of the user. Uh, and you can use those to make all kinds of decisions about what services they're entitled to. Uh, and so I think of those two as, as very complementary and, and we're excited about both. Thank you, Alex. And um... Ramesh, your answer and a little bit more about where you are today. Sure. Thanks, Brett. Thanks, Alex, Matt. So like Brett already introduced, I'm Ramesh Kassanpalli. I'm running a company called Digital Trust Networks. And uh, to build on what uh, Alex has mentioned, uh, FIDO definitely brings that the human binding to the authentication process. And in a way, with FIDO Lens, we, we did actually have decentralized authentication process. So there is no centralization of authentication anymore. Anybody, everybody can 
create uh, cryptographic keys and that will become the you know uh, foundation for authentication process so with fido we kind of decentralize the authentication process and the work that's being done by da foundation w3c claims is very very interesting and there are a lot of initiatives that are happening and uh, you know when when we try to look at this identity space right now the way uh, various initiatives that are happening um what's interesting is how do we actually take the standards that are that are happening with respect to identity and verifiable claims and then bind it with the fido authentication um it, it creates a, a different kind of uh, uh, mechanism uh some of the things that we are trying to define in now uh, uh, did alliance is exactly how do you create that initial trusted identity for users and uh, with that trusted trusted identity if you can bind it with the fido authentication you actually kind of create a stronger access point for the user to actually control his identities and you can use this uh, uh verifiable claims and what the ai foundation is doing to interestingly actually link those two to form a very very stronger identity where see the the fraud alone is just not limited to a uh, digital space it is also in the physical space a lot as we know when somebody goes into a bank and tries to give an employment letter we don't even know if that he is really working for that company or not so the, w- what's interesting and what's possible with the combination of what fido has done till now and what's coming out of the af foundation w3c claims is creating this 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 distributed identity space where the data can remain where it is the verifiable claims can remain where they are and be able to actually connect them through uh, decentralized uh, identities i mean decentralized identifiers with or without the you know blockchain for that matter and then hang it off of a fido authentication layer now you actually create an ecosystem where if you want to check my I, university that i went to in india you can simply check it sitting here so that's what brings these two together where um like alex was mentioning these two are extremely complementary and what i what what i would like to see for going forward to bring these two together not get too much caught up into you know technological uh uh variations there but try to come together for for, for an implementation framework you know i mean i want to make sure if we really implement this correctly in the digital identity space a social security number that is given to me should be verifiable from india because social security number is a trusted identity similarly if you see aadhar for instance an aadhar identity why should it be only valid in india when it comes to here that's a very powerful identity that can be presented and verified right away and these actual for whether the social security number or citizen identity that is given in the uh, rest of the europe or aadhar id given in something like some country like in india these are actually issued by a very you know trustable uh, sources governments nothing can be more stronger than that so how do you bring these things together that's what actually makes it very interesting in the digital identity space going forward thank you ramesh so so far uh, our panelists are thinking um the cryptographic authentication technologies of fido the cryptographic uh, technologies being deployed and distributed distributed ledgers are complementary building blocks uh that can be used to improve the overall state of identity management. Um Matt, I want to turn to you. Um again ask you to remind the viewers a little bit more about what you're up to these days, where where you're active and give your perspective, especially if 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 you have any different thoughts about that question, uh please share. All right. So, um I'm Nat Sakimura, the chairman of OpenID Foundation. Um uh these days I'm re- working on something called a financial grade API security standards as well as a lot of privacy um frameworks and greater stuff in the international standard area. Now, as far as the question is concerned, um my uh version of answer may be a little bit different from the uh, usual cut approach because i think 
the you know my my version of identity is set of attributes a set of claims related to an entity and when you think about that there won't be any single source of identity each attribute each claims have got its own authoritative sources right uh, and it's not going to be unified. That means that if you really want to get a trusted source, a trusted you know, claims value from authoritative sources, there's no way, but it just has to get decentralized. There will never be a single centralized source. So the claims necessary uh, has to be you know, decentralized. Also, when it comes to authentication, you may have several options, but one of the most trusted source of authentication, in fact, these days is your phone, right? Yep. That's uh, cryptographic, uh, you know, trusted computing component that almost everyone has. So that will become centralized you know, centerpiece and you will be depending on that. And that is again, one of the claim source. You know, it's about, it's the claim source about your existence, your you know, proxy to your say finger or face or something like that. So that's the way I see the world. It's going to be sourcing the authoritative sources and authoritative sources are going to be distributed. Therefore, it's going to be distributed or decentralized. Thank you, Nat, for those opening thoughts. Um, now I'm going to come back and, and ask each of you a little more uh, about each of your theories um, and given your perspective on the question. So let me go back to Alex and ask you to talk about this from from the outside, from the user experience, right? Of, of all of our panelists, uh, you probably have the greatest number of use cases to worry about. Um, you know, your, your customer base from the consumer to all kinds of enterprise and everything in between. Um, so if these are all complementary building blocks, maybe pontificate a little bit about how this comes together from the user experience. And you can pick your user, right? You can say, all right, if you're a business, this is what it looks like to you when we put all the pieces in place. Or if you're an end user, this is what it looks like to you when we have all the pieces in place. Go ahead. Yeah, so Brett, you've got a, a heck of a great question there. Um, look, I think there's existing art we can look at to understand and get a really good feel for some of what Nate was saying earlier, right? So if you ever, not all of us, but nearly all of us at this point, have had that really nice experience of authenticating using something like Windows Hello or your Face ID or Touch ID on your iOS device or one of the varieties of, of um, biometric authentication on the, Google, on the Android platform, right? Like those are just so simple and nice in terms of I hold up my phone and it, you know, I see a little bit of an indicator that something's happening. Maybe I click or touch and then I'm, it just proves who I am. Um, and so I think of that, like Matt was saying, as, the, as really a really clean experience for the authentication part. The claims piece, if you think about verified claims and decentralized identities, that's much more challenging to figure out what the UX model for that should be like, right? Like it's a concept of managing your identity, I think is not something that comes naturally to people necessarily. Uh, there aren't as many readily available uh, metaphors and the process and the thought pattern that goes into it can sometimes be a little bit more complicated. Um, I do think we can see some places where there's existing art. So if you think about the wallet applications on your phone, right? And like those are essentially claims, right? Like I have a claim that I'm a British Air you know, gold executive member, and it's represented as a little card in my wallet. And I kind of know how to deal with that pretty well. Um, so I think that, again, you can probably see the metaphors there. And, you know, I'm used to with Apple Pay, for instance, 
I can use my phone and I can approve using my Chase card with uh, to pay for something, right? So the, I think we can see the beginnings of the experience there, but there are a lot of key pieces that we still are gonna have to figure out. So for instance, I think one of the most exciting uh, promises that a verified claim and decentralized identities can give you is the ability to see all the places that a claim has been used and to exercise kind of your GDPR privacy rights and ask for it to be given back to you. Um, but that again is a, like, I'm not sure what the UX metaphor is for how to take that back. We're experimenting with a lot of ideas there. Um, and then I think the other big challenge in the UX space is I've lost my phone, right? Like how do I go about recovering, proving who I am again, getting my cryptographic secrets back so that I can get back up and running. Um, and uh, we've played with a whole bunch of ideas there. Like, you know, and the industry has tried things like long stories or, you know, go print out these codes and go put them somewhere safe. And I just think all of the existing art in the space is terrible. Uh, and so we're gonna have to do a lot of work to help people figure out what that right model is and invent it. Um, you know, the, the closest thing I think we have today to a good model there is take your FIDO key and lock it up in your desk drawer, but that's still, that's not a great model. So we, I think the, the UX work for consumers and, and how that experience goes is an area for a lot of pioneering still. You know, th thank you, Alex. And you kind of stitched a lot of ideas together there for us to kind of illustrating what does it mean if things are decentralized. So if, if I'm a user, I'm still using my, the phone I have today, for example, and I am probably still using my favorite user agents on that phone um, that I use today. So it sounds like the art is really on the back end. So Ramesh, I'm gonna to turn to you and I'm gonna give you a, a tough question here, uh, challenge you a little bit um, that things are gonna go in this direction because you can say that it can't be you know, it's got to be decentralized, right? It seems to just be common sense, as Nat was saying, because different sources are the authorities for different yes. claims. So it just has to be decentralized, right? But now juxtapose that against the reality of today. You know, businesses tend to find a way to build a solution. So you, we, what we have is we have some sizable companies aggregating that data, right? making a business out of aggregating that data and making it available so that when companies need to verify identity, there are just a few sources they need to turn to, you know, the consolidation of that market and offering it as a service, as opposed to needing to get the answer from my user every time and somehow get directed to it. So my question for you, Ramesh, is how are we going to get the industry cooperating in a fundamentally new way so that yes, the attributes can come from the obvious attribute authorities as opposed to centralized aggregators that don't necessarily need this decentralized infrastructure to keep doing what they've been doing. Rush? Well, the question itself is loaded and very long. <laughs> I actually have done a good six months study after Fire Alliance um, around last year, I started looking into this space. Often when we are trying to actually look into this space, um, you know, the things that you see and did not observe different before, they look different when you're taking an approach and then trying to do that. And uh, when I was looking into this space primarily to touch upon some of the com comments that Alex made, anything that's coming new if it is going to be needing a lot of user experience training, it's never going to take off. We can call it. Part of the reason, in spite of our uh, FIDO lines, whatever we're trying to do, what Apple has done, putting the fingerprint under the home button is the master stroke of favorite to get people used to biometrics. There has to be something like that if we really want to do this here. Point number one. Point number two, when I see a lot of efforts that are going in the market, I see a organic incremental thinking with respect to giving too much focus on the privacy and security. What I felt was if we are trying to come up with a framework and a solution, often you need to take yourself out of the equation and start looking outside in. 
you know, instead of getting your head stuck into the sand. So when I when when I when you take that approach, part of the reason the physical world working reasonable to a degree is, in my opinion, there are four legs that are balancing: privacy, security, trust, and accountability. Privacy and security is something that is fundamental use, you know, rights of our every single person. But that is also associated with trust and accountability. If I come and tell you something wrong, or some say something to you, you want to trust me at my face value. If I happen to mislead you, you will come back and hold me accountable for that. At least ask me, Ramesh, why did you do that? These four legs have to balance together. The problem that I felt. when i did all the study was there are a lot of so many building blocks that are available right now whether it is the work great work that was done by self sovereign identity obviously our own fido alliance their foundation when i see all these things all the great building blocks are there for us right now it's time just like what we did fido alliance is time to eliminate passwords now it's time to take change the internet infrastructure orientation from an account oriented infrastructure into an identity oriented infrastructure when you turn that into identity oriented infrastructure then you are seeing the world very differently and then coming back to your question about how do you actually make sure different people when they claim something or you trust that they never actually check from any of the trusted sources of mine i went to mit madras in india to do my engineering probably if i put it and say i went to stanford some of you probably will believe that i don't know you know and so if you if you see what's happening there now we have an infrastructure where you know why should we depend on somebody presenting data about me to you more data than what i would like them to share it with you why should there be these third party islands of companies trying to harvest the data looking into some of the tra- transactions that we are trying to do go check in linkedin you know why should they even exist in my opinion i'm not saying you don't have anything against against with them that is what is causing the problem for us when we go and and then provide a it's a six chain in six different hotels and then give passports in six different places we're not even sure where it's going to stay or not you know So it's interesting Ramesh so if I can I think we might be building a, th- a thesis here together if I go back to Alex and you kind know, of quickly summarize it's along the lines of you know, we're trying to we're trying to move the market trying to move the industry from where it is to a better place one thing we have to do is we have to improve the user experience and I think from our experience with Fido that was key to it we didn't go to the market and say we can give you better security we came and said we can give you better experience by the way it's more secure yes and then what you're getting at is um yes we might have people for being centralized providers of identity data and they might be making this easy for other businesses to consume as a service but there's no trust and accountability there's a little bit of trust and there's no accountability no accountability right? so it, we can improve the quality of yes. the data uh for those companies that are already paying for this data we can improve the quality now we're giving efficiency and a better business value to pull them into the new model so as i turn to you net um you've got your finger on the pulse of standards and kind of the r&d community and kind of what's coming down the pike um what do you see on the horizon that seems to be aligned with this thesis that we are moving the industry this isn't just another shiny object things are actually moving and we can expect the international community to support and deploy under this new model from what what i see this model is quite decent yet we need a whole lot of consolidations and standardization that goes together with a business model yes and Yeah, there are too many variations right now. And the, the variation means that the population is divided into that many chunks. And each chunk right now is not be enough for business to react. So we have to get more standardization, right? Which makes the each addressable 
market much bigger. Also, the there has to be business reason for them to you know get onto it. And we are still in the process of figuring out what is the viable method for that. Well, you know, if I know the answer, I probably wouldn't be talking about it and making my business <laughs> right now. You're still researching on it. <laughs> yeah. No, so it's a great point, Nat, about variation. Too much variation, too many options. Yes. And maybe we need more kind of profiling and, and, and su support some of the, the, the 800 pound gorillas, for lack of a better metaphor, backing one or two recipes. Um, so now I'm going to turn it over. If any of our, any of the panelists wished you had gotten the question that I was asking another panelist, this is your chance to weigh in. Would anyone want to comment on, on what you've heard today that you haven't yet commented on? Well, so Brett, can I offer a, a follow-up on, on Nat's last point? Um, I think the other key thing that we really, that at least we're super focused on is what I, I almost think of as a, as a blue ocean strategy. Um, there are lots of places where, there, where the current existing digital technology works reasonably well despite the headaches that it causes. Um, and I think those are some of the hardest places to flip to the new model. Whereas, the, whereas there are places where in fact, there are the existing solutions are really poor, are really a poor fit and where the demand for more privacy enhancing and more decentralized, in fact, is, is a more natural fit for those. So I think that a big part of the strategy that we should be all using to get this going is to try to identify, maybe it's a, they are smaller, more niche markets that are underserved today and figure out how we get the first million, 10 million, 20 million identities going there because uh, I think all of my experience has always been that the first million is the hardest. Uh, and then after that, you've got some momentum and the flywheel starts going and then you can expand the concept once it's proved into adjacent areas. Um, so I, I hope that we can take some of that wisdom that Nat had, which is you need more standardization, but do that in a way that uh, harnesses kind of, a, rather than trying to go everywhere at once, focus our energies on a small set of underproven markets and then expand from there as, as, as we get some success. And as, as much as I, you know, am a fan of standardization, have made a career out of standardization, um, I think there's capital S and small s standards. I think what we're talking about are really recipes that are quick to market um, and repeatable and reliable and verifiable. And then we can get our formal standardization down the road. You don't innovate in a formal standardization body. You innovate in small groups that can, you know, execution and running code. Um, thank you for those comments, Alex. And uh, Ramesh or Nat, any further comments before we kind of move into final thoughts from each of you? Yeah, that, I, I think the um, there is a actually the complementary things that Alex and Nat mentioned. Standardization very very important. But uh, standardization will have to also have a business angle to it. Unfortunately, most of the standards bodies that we see, they are so technically oriented and only technical people will be there. If you remember first, when we, when we started Fido Lands back in 2011, first few meetings I used to have all the CEOs of the companies, you know, the people who have a strategic interest in what they want to push, you know. In these bodies, if we have some kind of business angle also where business leaders actually come and participate, uh, those things, uh, the technical things will steer in a way that can come to the low uh, hanging fruit or whatever we want to call it industry to position and then go to market in that way that will expedite the market a lot faster. So before we go into wrap up, I'm gonna throw out one more question and I'm gonna break my own rule. I want each of you to answer this question. Um, very briefly, as you have, each of you are advocates for this vision and this model. I'm not the first person you've talked to about this. So uh, my question is, what is the, what has landed and resonated in those conversations with other stakeholders? Like, ah, someone really got it when I said it this way. They really saw the value and that they, they were, there was buy-in. 
And then, well, I really got a lot of pushback when I positioned it this way. This was a, this is a challenge that I don't know that we as an industry have a great answer for. So kind of an example of when people, when the message lands and people really get it, an example of some pushback that maybe we still have some work to do. Let me start with you, Nat. Uh, that's a very good question. But um, what I keep hearing is that it hasn't made um, simple in the sense that the implementation and the running of that stack is easy enough for the people who's consuming it, right? At the same time, um, it has been that simple for people to use. And also, not only secure, but has to give the peace of mind. Yeah, providing something like that is really important, yeah. Thank you, Nat. And Ramesh, very quickly, want to make sure we have time for q and <laughs> it's, it's not a quick answer I can give because then when I did the study, you know, depending on who you talk to, the perspectives are, are very, very different as you know, you know. So first thing from, I, I'm a strong believer if we are trying to define this new system, something like this, you better include everybody, not just the people who have the smartphones. You know, uh, and build a system which will address once in once in for all digital identity for everybody. So if I take the tag, the things that I talk to, for instance, uh, UN, for instance, they really liked something, a, an identity given on a piece of plastic. You know, where people coming from uh, refugees and those kind of people, it's easy to handle. Same thing if I go and talk to. Um, somebody like, uh, 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 you know, uh, who is running an identity system, you know, when they talk about uh, a data verifiable claim you know, delivered to the device, it actually freaks some people out because that's, again, user experience and people who know how to use it are the only people who can use it, you know. Uh, and then it goes back, if I talk to business people, first question they'll ask is, what is in it for me? You know, why should I do that? You know, so when I talk to when I talk to service providers, when I did study for six months, they have a different expectation. Issuers have a different expectation. Users have a different expectation. You know, so obviously we had to tailor the story that will fit and excite them. Pretty much like what we did with Fido Alliance. When when we talk to different people, we have a different story. I think that's something like that has to be put here. If you read that, that is, there is no silver bullet here, unfortunately. Yep. All right. So now right before q and I'm going to let everyone um, provide some, just some very quick final thoughts on this thesis. Is the future decentralized? You can say a little bit more than a yes, no answer, <laughs> uh, but not too much more. All right. Ramesh, let's start with you. Yeah, it's definitely uh, decentralized or I would like to call it uh, using decentralized identifiers, but a distributed identity system. Um, that's definitely future in my uh, strong belief. Second thing that I also would uh, ask the community, you know, um, start taking, you know, now whatever systems that were done in the digital world, we have taken a digital world in a path and we continue to think digital world is different and real world is different. Now we are at an inflection point Digital world is our real world nowadays. So we need to stop thinking and treating digital world differently than re, you know, real world and see what kind of system that we can design that brings these both worlds together as close to possible, as close as possible together. You know, uh, that you, would be an interesting thing that uh, we should look into. Thank you, Ramesh. Is the future decentralized, Alex? Hey, I'm, I'm pretty convinced the future is definitely decentralized. Uh, we've already got customers who are pretty excited about the opportunities. Uh, obviously, you know, it's more like a five-year journey, not a one-year journey to get there. But I think there are some really compelling scenarios. And if we can give big customers ways to move there that don't require rewriting their entire application infrastructure and instead let them try it out in new things uh, and get comfortable first before they have to make huge bets. I, I think we can make it happen. I'm, I'm really excited about that future. And Matt, is the future decentralized? Yes, because we have to get to the authoritative sources, right? Also, 
However, having said that, to get there, we have to lay out the roadmaps that will allow us to smoothly move from what we have now to the ultimate state. We, it's yet to be found out and we have to try. So as Because everyone on this panel is an industry leader uh, in their own segment. And you're saying as industry leaders, we need to do a better job of articulating the roadmap yep. uh, to, to this future, this decentralized and, and start saying it the same way, being consistent, providing clarity. There's a lot of variation at the moment and uh, we don't want the complexity to get in the way uh, of the benefits. Thank you so much. And thank all the panelists today for their great comments. And now to uh, open Q&A. Uh, 